54. Well, we're just going through all sorts of fun little stories, aren't we? Absalom returns to Jerusalem. This is going to be 2 Samuel verses or chapter 14, the entire chapter. Absalom returns to Jerusalem. No, I don't really think I need to spell it. Like the combination of Absol and Solom. And then Absalom. Anyway, Job, J O A B, son of Zariah, knew that the king's heart was that the king's heart longed for Absalom, so Job sent some one to Tekoa, T E K A T E K O A, and heard a wise woman brought and had a wise woman brought from there. He said to her, Pretend you are in mourning, dress in mourning clothes, and do not under any circ and do not use any cosmic locations or cosmetic lotions. <coughs> cosmetic locations. Cosmic location. Uh, act like a woman who has spent many days grieving. For the dead, then go to the king and speak these words to him. Job put the words in her mouth. When the woman from Tekoa, T E K O A, these sounds like names from Star Wars, went. Many Hebrew manuscripts, Septuagint, Falcon, and Cyrillic, most Hebrew manuscripts spoke, okay, whatever, to the king. She fell with her face to the ground. <clears throat> to pay him honor and said to and she said to him help me your majesty the king asked her what is troubling you I am a widow my husband is dead I your servant have two sons they got into a fight with one another in the field and one, no one was there to separate them. One struck the other and killed him. Now the whole clan has raised up against your servant, they say. <coughs> Hand over the one who struck his brother down, so that we may put him to death for the life of his brother who he kill, whom he killed. Then we will rid of the air as well. <clears throat> they will put out the only burning coal I have left, leaving my husband neither name nor descendant on the face of the earth. <clears throat> The king said to the woman, Go home, and I will issue an order in your behalf. But the woman of from the woman from Tikra said to him, Let my lord pardon me and my family, and let the king and his throne be without guilt. The king replied, If anyone says anything to you, bring them to me, and they will not bother you again. <coughs> she said, Then let your ki let the king invoke the Lord his God to prevent the avenger of blood from attending to the destruction. Would he even be the avenger of blood in this case, since it was brother on brother? Because I would think it would be a family mother member. Hmm. Need to. How would. Hebrew law lawyers, I don't know. Someone, I don't know. So that my son will not be destroyed. Surely, as the Lord lives, he said, not one hair of your son's 
head will fall to the ground. Then the woman said, Let your servant speak a word to my lord the king. Speak, he replied. <coughs> the woman said, Why then have you devised a thing like this against the people of God when the king says this? Does he not convict himself? For the king has not brought back his banished son, like water spilled on the ground, which cannot re be recovered, so we must die. <coughs> but that is not what the Lord desires. Rather, he drives away. He devises a way so that a banished person does not re remain banished from him. Wow, just clearly come up with any story where David is like a character, but not directly mentioned as David. And David won't even pick it up. <sighs> Interesting. And now I have come to say this. To my lord, the king, because the people have made me afraid, your servant thought, I will speak to the king, perhaps he will grant his servant's request, request. Perhaps the king will agree to deliver his son from the hand of the man who is trying to cut off both me and my son from God's inheritance. And now your servant says, May the word of my lord the king secure my inheritance, for my lord the king is like an angel of God, <coughs> discerning good and evil. May the Lord your God be with you. Then the woman said, that, "No." Then the king said to the woman, "Don't keep from me the answer to what I am going to ask you. Let the." Let my lord the king speak, the woman said. The king said, Isn't the hand of Job with you in all this? <laughs> He's like, wait. That guy, Job, whatever his name is. Jeremiah, no, um. He put you up to this, thing. he? Uh. The woman answered, As surely as you live, my lord the king... No one can turn to the right or to the left from anything my lord the king says. Yes, it was your servant Job who instructed me to do this and who put all these words into my mouth of into the no into the mouth of your servant. Your servant Job did this to charge the present changed present situation my lord has wisdom like that of an angel of god he knows everything that happens in the land the king said to job very well i will do it go bring back the young man absalom <coughs> job fell with his face to the ground to pay him honor why would he be there? Well, he's his top military advisor. Probably his, like, top guard discussing military strategies. Other reasons, numerous, too numerous to list. And he blessed the king, and probably just to see what, how things would go. Job said, Today your servant knows that he has found favor in your eyes. My lord the king, because the king has granted his servant's request, then Job went to Geshur and brought Absalom back to Jerusalem. Oh, G-E-S-H-U-R. But the king said, He must go to his own house. He must not see my face. <coughs> so Absalom went to his own house and did not see the face of the king. In all of Israel, there was not a man so highly praised for his handsome appearance than Eps as Absalom. 
from the top of his head to the sole of his foot there was no blemish on him. Whenever he cut his the hair of his head, he used to cut his hair once a year because it became too heavy for him. Okay. That's a weird reason to cut your hair, but anyway. He would weigh it, and its weight was 200 shekels. That is about 5 pounds or 2.3 kilograms. Also, I have, an entire, I have a little mini video about the different weights and measurements and conversions and random stuff relating to this in up in the channel page by list of stuff also you probably should check out list of stuff it's a list of cool stuff by the royal standard five pounds of dude what chat in the neck of Larry did you win okay three sons and daughters were born to Epsilon. His daughter his name was Tamar and she became a beautiful woman oh, named her after his sister. He lived two years in Jerusalem without seeing the king's face. Epsilon sent for Job in order to send him to the king but Job refused to come to him so he sent a second time but refused to come. Then he said to his servants, Look, Job's field is next to mine, and he, ha he has barely barley there. Go and set, fire, set it on fire. What? <coughs> uh, you aren't coming to me, so I'm going to set your field on fire. Don't you know who my dad is? So Absalom's servants set the field on fire. Then Job did go to Absalom's house, and he said to him, Why have your servants set my field on fire? That is the stupidest way of getting someone's attention. Set their stuff on fire. Absalom said to Job, Look, I sent word to you, and said, Come here, so I can send you to the king to ask, Why have I come to from Geshur? It would be better for me if I were still there. Now then, I want to see the king's face, and if I am guilty of anything, let him put me to death. Huh. Like, am I guilty of anything? Have I done any crime? If so, please kill me. Well then, so Job went to the king and told him this. Then the king summoned Epsilon, and he came in and bowed down with his face to the ground before the king, and the king kissed Epsilon. Whew! Yep. How is it? 11.07. It's still Alaska Day. It shall always be Alaska Day. Well, public celebration starts tomorrow, but anyway, it sleeps.